Hi, and uh, welcome to another painting tutorial. Uh, this is the beginning of a series on skin for uh, various factions and races in Age of Sigmar, Warhammer 40,000, and most other games out there. Through our uh, Patreon support, we have finally gotten the chance to update the mic so that our voice recordings will be a little bit better. Uh, please uh, give us a few tutorials to make sure that we get this down right. If you want to contribute to making these videos better quality and more frequent, please head over to our Patreon page linked down below and pledge whatever you can. If you can't, that's totally fine. Uh, please enjoy the content that we provide as much as you need. Uh, this first tutorial uh, is focusing on orc or orc skin and is a little different than the regular green skin that you would see from example Warhammer TV or other uh, tutorials out there we're going to use a little bit more of earth toned green uh, for this tutorial. The palette that we're going to use uh, for this tutorial is the following. Citadel Deathworld Forest, uh, model color lime green, Citadel Nurgling green, Citadel Nagaroth Night Purple, and Citadel Reclan Flesh Shade Wash. I undercoated the model with black primer. I've also mixed the purple and the death world green to make a cooler, darker, brown toned green to cover all of the skin in every crack. I lowered the temperature on this first coat to make it easier to increase the heat in the green moving along. This will increase the contrast in the final result. Use a rough brush for this first coat and give it two thin coats. Once we have a solid layer down with no streaks or spots, we take the Reclaim Flesh Shade and put the wash over the entire miniature. I use a red wash here to use the complementary colors to, again, increase the contrast of the final product. Once the wash has completely dried, we have the foundation done for the skin and we can now start to layer paint and build up the nice earthy green tone for the skin. We now use our fine uh, brush like a Winsor Newton Series 7 to make sure that we have good control of our brushwork. Our first layer will be a slightly brighter version of the original mix we had. I don't go straight for the pure death world forest, but if you want to cut down the working time for your models, you can cut out this part. I start by defining the muscles staying away from the cracks. Uh, you want to think of zenithal light when you're applying this first layer, but also reflecting light so spots under his arms would be partially painted as well. The head is always a bit tricky to know how much to cover of what the wash defined, but this first layer is more important to cover a little too much than a little too little as most shapes right now are micro shadows. These shadows do not need to be as dark as for example under the chin or inside the armpits. For the second layer, we go straight into the pure death world forest. With this layer technique, we want to save some area that transitions into the base coat. So cover most, but not all of the previous layer.
as you can see, it's already starting to saturate the areas nicely. For the third layer, we mix in a little bit of Nurgling Green into the Death World Forest, as well as a little bit of Lime Green. This will both brighten the skin, but also saturate it even more. Make sure not to use too much Lime Green just yet. You want to increase the amount just a little bit each layer to make a smooth transition. For the neck area, we want to start defining the dip that separates the two neck muscles running up towards the skull. Don't make it too noticeable yet. We will keep emphasizing it more and more with each layer. For the face, we now start to really define each part like the ridges of the lips. I make tiny lines around the mouth to make it look like they're dry and chaffed. Once again for layer 4, we mix in a little bit more Nurgling Green and a little bit more Lime Green into our mix. Uh, I keep layering the paint in the same exact pattern as we did in the previous layers. Watch carefully how I make each layer smaller and more precise to give the skin smooth transitions and build up that 3D shapes uh, from a Zenith of Light perspective. You can keep mixing in bits of Nurgle and Lime Green to bring out certain features of your model. Play around with it and make sure you have fun doing it. I make tiny lines around the mouth to make it look like they're dry and chaffed.
Lastly, and this is an optional stage, I take a small amount of blood letter glaze. It's a red glaze, which I've mixed in a little bit of Lamia medium into. And once again, I use my trash brush to mix it. I apply several coats of this glaze to lips, ears, nose, and cheekbones, some more layers than other. Um, make sure that you let the glaze dry fully in between each coat. I also apply the glaze to areas where the armor may have caused skin irritation. Raw metal to any skin, even orc skin, would cause it to become scrapped and chafed. The redness will also give it a little bit more variation to the skin. It's a trick that can be done also with blending, which in this example can be used mixing in Caucasian skin tones and red into your green mix. Uh, but this is a quicker version and has a good effect. That's it for this tutorial. I hope you guys learned something new and are excited about the new book, Orc Warclans. I want to thank all of our patrons for the support they give to this video. Carl Martin, Jonathan Edlund, Jason D. Fluffer, Mark Alexander, and Matt Riptowski. Also, thank you to everyone who purchased my shirts. If you want to contribute to our patron and or get one of my shirts, please see the links down below. Editing for this video was done by Martin Kramer. Thank you so much for watching and have a great time painting your orgs and orcs.